any expedition into the forest is an adventure. The conservation status for Kiwis is endangered. Time is of the essence because the population is declining and by simply going through that long-term ambition of trying to be predator-free will not be quick enough to save the Kiwis. We've pretty much got just about every endangered species in the North Island except for Kokako and we're working with those endangered species by doing broad-scale predator control and working more specifically with kiwi. Kia ora, I'm Simon Hall and I'm the uh, boss of Forest Life Force and we're here today to do a kiwi egg lift. Well I think there's an obligation to do something because we own the land and nobody else was going to do anything so by default we've suddenly become a lot interested in the ecology and as such we've formed a trust and we're actively trying to restore the Nahiri Māori we translated as the Forest Life Force. The Operation Nest Egg program is we have adult kiwis in the wild living quite naturally except for the fact that we have transmitters on them and we can monitor when they are nesting. They, they nest in the ground, they'll often nest in amongst the roots of trees. The female builds the nest but it's the male that sits on the eggs. So the job today was to locate where that nest was. So these kiwis are nesting in the wild and we're using radio tracking gear to find that nest and it's, it's best we do that during the daytime and we leave a little trail behind so that once that kiwi gets off the nest at night time we can move back in quietly and remove the eggs. There's generally two eggs and we put them in little boxes which allows us to carry them out of the forest very carefully. Now that process um, of getting the eggs from the nest to the hatchery can be quite involved so often it's, it's a walk through the forest to the nearest vehicle and then a, a drive back to the camp here and then the next morning they're either driven or flown to the hatchery. When we get to the hatchery they'll inspect the eggs, they'll look to ensure they're fertile, they'll wash them, they'll measure them, they'll sort of age them, they'll give us an indication how old they are and then they put them into incubation and that machine will automatically rotate the eggs as close to how they may be rotated naturally. After the chicks hatch they'll go off to a creche where they can grow in captivity and in the creches are predator free. Some are pens and some are more natural environments and once they get to about 1 kg which can take anywhere from six months to a year we will release them back into the forest. Yeah the release is probably the easiest part of, of the process whereby we um, we take them back back to the forest and just make a little burrow and pop them in and they're quite happy in that burrow until night time comes and then they will exit it and live ha happily ever after hopefully. <laughs> the, the Kiwis um, when you release them back into the wild they are pretty instinctive they will feed pretty much immediately. If they are born in the wild they only spend a matter of days with their parents before they, they wander off and um, feed for themselves. We've got quite a few stoats, uh, possums and also rats, as well as cats and ferrets, so the whole lot. <laughs> Our native birds are very vulnerable to those particular predators because they haven't evolved enough to protect themselves, so they will be wiped out if we don't control the predators. In, in this area, the main threat to kiwi uh, stoats that 
that prey on the the chicks, and the um, the the chicks are very vulnerable to stoats up until they weigh about a kilo. From then on, they can they can generally fight one off. Up to about 95% of chicks born in the wild get taken by stoats. So your remnant population cannot increase if if 95% of the chicks are being been taken. We started off with a remnant population, perhaps uh, 60 pairs, the which you would not expect to be here because for most of North Island's forests which are unprotected, uh, there's no kiwis that are left there so we're quite fortunate that, that we have got this remnant population. So for the last uh, 14 or 15 years we've been nurturing it and now we've got a population in the hundreds and we're sending birds to other sanctuaries as their founders. We know that 60 to 70 percent of them will survive and successfully breed. I think the biggest goal would to become predator free but that's very much a long-term process but in the meantime we have endangered species here which won't be here in a few years time so we're also working with individual species as well as working across the landscape.